This is part 17 of Federalist number 15. We are down to the, well, there's only, there are only two more paragraphs left. Um, we are talking about the defects of the um, Articles of Confederation. Remember, that's the first Constitution of the United States when it was a confederacy rather than a union. And uh, in Federalist number 15, Hamilton starts speaking about the shortcomings of their first constitution, shortcomings of the Articles of the Confederation. And I put this on board so that we take a look at the most important parts of a responsible government, a government that acts on your behalf, does not curtail your freedoms, does not cut your freedoms in half, does not stop you from enjoying your freedoms, should be idea of checks and balances, division of powers. You divide the power into legislative, executive, and Judiciary. Judiciary are the judges. You have to have an independent judiciary. You would never go play a game knowing that the referee is bought by somebody or is going to rule on somebody's behalf because they were scared or they have been bribed or they feel like they might not get to be referees anymore or for whatever reason, they are not independent anymore. You can't judge them, right? So you want an, an independent judiciary, a judiciary, judges that are not afraid to lose their jobs, to lose their salary when they are sitting at the bench, when they are being judges. So you don't allow the Congress, whether it's the House or the Senate or the President, to change their salaries while they're judges. And also you make it real hard for judges to be removed. This way they are not afraid of making the correct or fair judgment and not be afraid that if they judge, uh, they make a judgment about something, their job will be in danger, their position will be in danger. So, and then we also talked about bicameral legislature. That's a legislature that's composed of two houses, let's say a House of Representatives and a Senate. And usually you do this and you give one of those chambers, one of those houses, longer terms of service and you expect them to look at things a little bit more long term. And also you set up a bicameral system so that one chamber, one house, checks the other one to make sure that they're doing their job properly and vice versa. So let me read the paragraph. If therefore the measures of the Confederacy cannot be executed without the intervention of the particular administration, there will be little prospect of their being executed at all. Okay, I'm going to read the whole paragraph, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. The rulers of respective members, whether they have a constitutional right to do it or not, will undertake to judge of the propriety of the measures themselves. They will consider the conformity of the thing proposed or required to their immediate interest or aims. The momentary conveniences or inconveniences that would attend its adoption. All this will be done and in a spirit of interested and suspicious scrutiny without that knowledge of national circumstances and reasons of state. 
which is essential to a right judgment, and with that strong predilection in favor of local objects, which can hardly fail to mislead the decision. The same process must be repeated in every member of which the body is constituted, and the execution of the plans framed by the councils of the whole will always fluctuate on the discretion of the ill-informed and prejudiced opinion of every part. Those who have been conversant in the proceedings of popular assemblies, who have seen how difficult it often is when there is no exterior pressure of circumstances to bring them to harmonious resolutions on important points, will readily conceive how impossible it must be to induce a number of such assemblies deliberating at a distance from each other, at different times and under different impressions, long to cooperate in the same views and pursuits. He's referring to the Articles of the Confederation because the states had all the powers. He says it's natural if you have the states involved to make decisions and give them too much power, they're going to, they're going to think of the individual state's interests first. Georgia is going to think what's in the interest of Georgia first before they think of interest of the whole union. He says this is the tendency and we've seen it over and over again. If you give the power to them and count on them to do it right, who knows, maybe one day they will, maybe one day they'll realize that if I do this thing, it might not be good for my state. They don't think long term. They just 